This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 982 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is the first of three with horse gal and bicycling enthusiast Gina Moronic. This time we chat about using your seat properly, both on a horse and on a bike. And we'll get right to our tip after this important message from EasySignsOnline.com. This week's Spotlight product from EasySignsOnline.com is their Outdoor Silhouette Cutouts. Made from a long-term outdoor durable vinyl aluminum material, these cutouts will outlast the old-style painted wood ones by many, many years. A great way to add an equestrian image to your barn, horse stalls, mailboxes, houses, or campers. Choose from dozens of equestrian or animal graphics online, available in two different sizes starting at only $59.95. And remember, free shipping on most orders over a hundred dollars all at easysignsonline.com get your silhouette cut out today and i'm so happy to welcome to horse tip daily today gina moronic who is a bicycle riding enthusiast and horse girl and you were on was it horses in the morning a little while back and we just got to chit chatting and discovered that you like to ride bicycles and that there were circo- yeah. some commonalities between bicycle riding and horse riding. There are indeed, yeah. Yeah, I happen to work for uh, Trek Bicycle Corporation, and uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a cycling expert. I'm an IT geek, but surprise, surprise, you work for a bike company, you ride a bike more, and uh, one of the things that jumped out at me is, wow, the riding skills that I'm learning also apply to trying to make riding a bike more comfortable and. I wonder if anybody else should know about this because it's a great way to do some cross training and other exercise for riders, but you know, you may not feel naturally comfortable on a bike. So let's apply some of that skill set. Well, it certainly piqued my interest. I do ride, I do occasionally ride a bicycle and I am an accident waiting to happen on a bicycle. So it, oh, it's, <laughs> it, it piqued my okay. interest to say the least. So let's, um let's start at the beginning and talk a little bit about, Kind of give us an overview of what sort of riding you do. So riding on a bike or riding on a horse? <laughs> a horse. We'll start with the horse, on since horse. that's more familiar okay. territory for all of us. Excellent. Okay, so um, I have an off-track thoroughbred mare, and I'm doing dressage stuff, but it's probably better termed flat work because I'm riding her in like an all-purpose hunt-style saddle because that's what's just more comfortable for me, and we're doing really basic stuff as I'm improving my own equitation and skills and working with her on supplements and stuff. So, so that's what I do. I'm, I'm sticking in the arena for the time being. She found that the trail options were there. There's just too many things in the big wide world. So got it. Baby <laughs> so steps in the arena and it's controlled. <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so did, did you discover the benefit of cross training and improving your fitness by getting on a bicycle a long time ago, or is this something that you discovered recently? No, this is pretty recent. I'd say it's within the last year because about a year and a half ago, I had a nasty fall off of a bike. And when I got back on the bike, I was, you know, dealing with a lot of the kind of anxiety you feel when you've had a nasty fall off a horse too. And so it's all right, well, how do I break this down and make this more successful? And so, you know, in the last the summers or so, I've been focusing a lot more on my own cycling equitation, if you will, and my riding equitation of where are my seat bones? What am I doing with my shoulders? All Interesting. Kind of well, isn't that fascinating? Yeah. Well, it looks like we're going to start in the middle with uh, using your seat. So give me some pointers yeah. on how using your seat aboard a bicycle and using your seat aboard a horse might interconnect. Yeah. So one of the things that we learn, I think, pretty early on when we're getting lessons and that kind of thing on a horse is about how to close your seat to slow things down. Just, okay, we need to get things under control. Let's close our seat. The same thing works on a bike, and this was particularly helpful for me for downhill stuff because that was 
give me the jitters of going downhill of, oh boy, I don't feel in control here. Well, if you don't feel in control, close your seat. That will rock your pelvis under you. That will make you feel more firm through your core. And that will also get some of the weight off of your front end. So you will just be in a better posture for traveling along. You'll be more connected to the bike just like you're more connected to the horse when you kind of close things up and, um, and get more solid. So just like riding a horse... When you feel like you're a little unbalanced going downhill, yeah. uh, the uh, the the ideal solution is not to slam on the brakes. It is to Correct. use your seat. Okay. <laughs> See, that's a problem because I slam on the brakes, so I've got to learn I, not to do I that. I was wearing out brake pads, too, and then I started, well, how about we close our seat first before we hit the bite in the mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting. Now, what about... Um, turning, because I, whenever I turn my bicycle, I have a tendency to turn with the handlebars, and unless sure. I'm on a nice, firm macadam road, things go awry in a yeah. hurry. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So there, too, it's um, similar to you know, the better you get on a horse, the more you learn about putting the weight in different parts of your seat bone, as, you know, weight on your left or weight on your right, will actually help that bike glide over so you could glide around a little pothole or glide to the other side of the bike path because somebody's walking in front of you, something like that. Because when you, you know, if you yoink on a horse's mouth, you can get him turned all right, but it's not very balanced. But if you can use your weight as part of it, then you'll both get to flow together, either the bike or the horse. Cool. So I'm going to have to practice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some of my cones that I use in the riding arena and I'm going to set them up. We live in a little dead end street here and I'm going to set them on the street and see if I can't practice weaving in and out of those cones the same way I do on Beaker. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to try. The difference there is Beaker knows what's going on and he does his best. Oh, yeah. You know, he does his best to not step on the cones despite my efforts. And right. um, yeah, the bicycle is yeah. going to make an honest rider out of me because it's it not going to make any effort. It will. Now. Yeah, it doesn't have a vested interest in the outcome. Nothing. None at all. So cool. That's a fantastic <laughs> group of of little helpful hints there. So you can take those things that you practice on your horse, apply them to a gentle ride round the block or through the woods mm-hmm. on your bicycle. Or if you're one of those people that needs to make best use of your time at all times because you're crazy busy, uh, when you're at the horse show grounds, instead of hopping on the smoke spewing motorcycle, you can you hop could. on a bicycle and practice yep. some of those skills. Providing those horses are all desensitized to bikes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they if they can put up with a motorcycle, I'm willing to bet they oh, can put true. up with a bike. Too true. Yeah, too yeah. True. Well, thank you very much, much Gina. We appreciate you stopping by. It's been a lot of fun. And Gina, you're going to be coming back to give us some more helpful hints. So, folks, stay tuned for more. Well, there you go. You can listen to all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go by downloading the free Horse Radio Network app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Do it today. It's quick. It's free. It's easy. This podcast has been made possible through the generous support of EasySignsOnline.com and listeners like you. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.